Now, it has been a season of anime, like a really good season of anime. If this is the bar we are setting for anime of 2021, then the rest of the year has some big shoes to fill because, whoa, was this season a good time to be an anime fan. I don't think I watched one show this season that I would rank under a 6 out of 10. And if you missed any of the shows on this list, then I highly urge you to go watch them. To be honest, I'm surprised the critic in me didn't hate a single show this season. <sighs> nope. Nope. RJ, you already made a video on that? You're not going to get in there? Mm -mm, nope. Mm, that's all I'm going to say on Redo of Healer. If you want my further thoughts on it, then go watch the video I made. You won't regret it. But speaking of anime that won't be on this list, anime like Attack on Titan Final Season and One Piece will sadly not be on this list. Attack on Titan won't be here because I already did a video on the series, which people didn't take kindly to at all. As of the recording of this video, the dislike ratio is actually beating the like ratio on that video. I think that's the only video on our channel where that's happening. So I highly urge you to go check that out because I feel like people took the video at face value because of the title and I can see why. Maybe I should change the title. Maybe not. Who knows? So I recorded this section before the episode dropped, but One Piece literally broke the internet this season with its recent episodes like, dear God. Spoiler alert, if you were not caught up with the anime, just skip to the intro. Okay? But Roger vs. Whitebeard has to be my favorite anime scene of all time at the moment. I keep re-watching this scene. I love it more and more each time. One Piece is literally the GOAT. When the scene dropped, it was so hype that the video was trending on YouTube. Roger vs. Whitebeard was so hype that they had Crunchyroll trending on the number one video platform in the world. If you have not started One Piece, I highly recommend it. Anyway. One Piece and Dr. Stone will also not be on this list because each one is getting its own video sometime in the future. And you guys already know my thoughts on One Piece. It's great. So if you want to be notified, then click that sub button. Anyway, that's enough in the introductions. Let's get into this awesome season of anime. I'll try to keep the spoilers to a minimum, but I'll warn you if I go into major spoiler territory. Okay, I'm going to be honest about this first one. I didn't expect to enjoy this season as much as I did. Slime has always been an okay show for me. A show that I watch in between the other exciting shows just because it's there. Slime was never extremely good, but it was never terrible either. Even the first five episodes of the second season had me just saying, all right, get to it. So I really thought this would be my mid-tier anime of the season. But then episode six and onward, the story picked up drastically. More of the world opened up and we finally got to see our characters handle some real conflicts. I have never wanted a kingdom of monsters to beat the crap out of humans, but for the first time I was rooting for the monsters. I also feel like we got some well-needed character development for Rimuru in this season. For the first time, something didn't go perfectly his way, and it was pretty interesting seeing him finally accept the fact that he's not human anymore. I think until this season, he thought of himself as a human trapped in a slime's body, but seeing what the humans did to his kingdom finally set in that his humanity isn't the same as it was. Slime has always been a pretty fun ride, but when the show touches on deeper things like humanity and revenge, you best believe that your eyes will be glued to the screen. I can say that the stakes of this show aren't as high as I would like, but the show still does its job, and I'm definitely going to keep watching if it gets future seasons. Also, don't mess with the Tempest Federation. They are OP. Like, very OP. I know I said I wouldn't rank any of these anime under a 6 out of 10, but <sighs> Cloverworks, you had one job. Just the one. 
I purposely kept quiet about this because I didn't want to, you know, judge the whole thing before I saw it all. But as each episode aired, I got more and more pissed off. This season was so bad that Caleb City indirectly made a video about it. The writers of one of the episodes didn't even want to be credited. Yeah, you heard that right. The writers were apparently so ashamed of what they did, they didn't even want their names on it. And through all this madness, they had the nerve, the audacity, the balls to give us a recap episode mid-season. As someone who has literally been with the series since day one when the first manga chapter dropped, this just made me mad because I heard, and don't quote me on this, that the original mangaka would be in charge of changing up the story. So I thought that they were just going to do something different, not give us an abridged, watered-down version of the manga with all the important and cool parts cut out. Because that's what season 2 was. I understand that the last arc of the manga was... Eh, not well received, but the Goldie Pond arc that was supposed to be season 2 was lit. And I am so sad that it didn't get animated. Season 1 was very well received, and that's because... why? They followed the manga, so I don't know whose bright idea it was to go a different, not so different route. They had all the tools for success and they dropped the ball. How? Why? Promise Neverland Brotherhood, anyone? <sighs> you had one job. Just, just one job. Okay, this is my mid-tier anime of the season. If you want a decent show to fill your time with, this is it. To be honest, the only reason I kept watching this show was by the time I got bored, I was already like six episodes in, so I just decided to keep going. The show is not bad. It's just pretty cliche, generic, and doesn't really take full advantage of its own setup. Okay, I just realized that everything I just said right now made the show sound bad, but trust me, it's okay. It's definitely forgettable and I wouldn't recommend it, but it's not the worst thing I've seen. Okay, in all honesty, I'm not trying to shit on this show because I didn't have the worst time with it, but frankly speaking, I didn't even want to put it on this list, but I watched it, so here we are. This show was not really talked about this past season and that's for good reason. It doesn't stand out. The characters are pretty basic and the plot is kind of predictable. I will say this though, the powers and designs are pretty cool. If Kimono gets any future seasons, I'll check them out because it does have potential. But as for right now, I say you can skip this one and you won't miss anything. Sorry. But it's still a 6 out of 10 though. Or you could just go watch it and decide for yourself. But for me, the show was mid-tier at best. There is always one anime of the season that I personally enjoy, but know full-heartedly that the vast majority of people would probably skip. This season, it was bottom-tier character Tomozaki, a traditional get-your-life-together-you-weird-gamer-nerd anime, where our main character finds himself getting coached on how to live a decent life by the school's most popular girl. Also, they both play knockoff Smash Bros, so that's a thing. As you would think, this leads to a whole bunch of situations where the school's nerd is trying his best to break out of his shell. And I thought this would be your average harem anime, but to be honest, he doesn't have a harem, like, at all. The girls he talks to are mostly just becoming good friends of his instead of falling head over heels for him. And that's a pretty refreshing feeling. The show isn't about love, so it's not really a romance. It's about fitting in and what it means to truly be successful in life. Seeing the main character's relationship develop over time makes me want to ship them together, but at the same time, I kind of like them as good friends. Ah, who am I kidding? They will be perfect for each other! But all jokes aside, the anime touches on the themes of competition, being social, and the effects of wearing a mask to hide your true self. So if you're into any of that kind of stuff with a budding and subtle romance sprinkled in, then this show is for you. I don't think bottom tier Tomozaki will do anything great for the anime community, but it's a good watch that every Slice of Life fan should definitely check out. There are not many shows that feel like a different series and truly make you fall in love with the show on its second season. Nine times out of ten, the first season sets up how the story is going to be for the seasons to come. Not ReZero. ReZero's second season took the show to a new level that I didn't think was possible. 
There's a video on YouTube by Kevin Nia where he breaks down my exact thoughts on the second season. Link in the description. In the video, he states that ReZero is a character study show, that the show is not about the world that Subaru finds himself in, but rather about the characters becoming better people. And this is really evident in the second season. I didn't give one flying fadoodle about Amaya's character in the first season or see any reason why Subaru should be so in love with her. She seems just like your generic anime nice girl who was misunderstood. But after watching the OVA and the second season, Amelia becomes a much more well-rounded character, and I have to say she's kind of one of my favorites at this point. Sorry, Rem fans. She becomes so much more than a love interest, and the way she learns to accept her flaws is just, well, inspiring. And Amelia isn't the only one who goes through this. We get more from Ram, Rosewald, and even minor characters that you may have forgotten about in Season 1. And of course, Subaru becomes a way better protagonist as well. And even though I agree that ReZero is more about its characters rather than the world, learning more of the world this season was just plain awesome. This season shows the audience that ReZero's world and characters have a lot more to offer than you may think. The details and world building in this season were just amazing. Yes, you learn about the witches. All the witches. And it's great. I didn't think I would enjoy ReZero this much, but as I said earlier, the second season changed up the entire show for me, opening up a story that I didn't think this series really had in it. This is why me and Isekai have a love-hate relationship, because some of them just really hit you out of nowhere with these amazing stories. Rarely does anime get a romance that actually focuses on the relationship rather than getting to the point of being in a relationship. If you have ever been in a relationship, then you know that there is a whole bunch of stories left to tell once you two finally get together. Enter Horimiya, the show that actually gets to the point rather than spending 12 episodes just to see the main couple hold hands. Now, this is nothing new for manga. There are plenty of manga that get to the point and tell the story of a relationship rather than waiting forever for the first kiss. But we're here to talk about anime, not manga. And this concept is very rare for the anime community. But Horimiya is so much more than a romance. It's a character drama that explores more than just the main couple. Yes, Miyamura and Hori are the main focus, but the latter half of the season kind of kicked them to the side to focus on the minor characters. And that's kind of awesome. It makes the cast and show feel much more alive, and the story being told is way more intriguing because there are more people to follow. If you like romance anime, then I definitely recommend this one if you haven't checked it out already. Yes, Horimiya may pull out your lonely strings, it sure did for me, but the story is still a great coming of age tale about teenagers going through, well, life. And I think there is something that every fan can relate to in there. Also, the show is just so freaking pretty, and the opening is already at the top of my playlist. There is a reason why this manga is currently the best-selling romance manga at the moment, and considering the anime is basically the same, yeah, I read the manga years ago, both anime watchers and manga readers are bound to get the same experience with this series. Side note though, if your romance life is in turmoil right now, then this may not be the best show for you. Take it from me. Too personal? Nah, whatever, let's move on. When it comes to World Trigger Season 2, the only thing I have to say to anyone who watched it is, I told you. I fucking told you. And to those who have not yet checked out the series, I'm telling you now. World Trigger is an amazing show. And if you like Shonen, then you are missing out on an incredible story. I've been doing this YouTube thing for at least like two years now, and there is a reason why our second video ever is on World Trigger. This show is so slept on that it hurts. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, the show does kind of have a slow buildup of 12 episodes, but once you get past that, the payoff is so worth it. The second season took everything I love about World Trigger and elevated it to the max. From strategy battles to the myriad of ways you can defeat your opponents, World Trigger isn't just a power shonen where the one with the most energy wins. It's a battle strategy shonen where everyone has equal opportunity to shine and you have no idea who's going to take the crown. 
if the clips I'm showing you aren't enough to make you at least check out the show, trust me, it's an investment you will not regret. The world building and power scaling are some of the best the shonen demographic have to offer. And bless Toei for giving this another season because the show deserves it. And let me just take a minute to talk about the drip that these teams have. Like, look at their costumes. L look at that design. The design is just so freaking cool. Like, I want to join Border. I love the updated animation. And this show was literally one of the highlights of my week. Go watch World Trigger. You won't regret it. If you have seen any of my videos, you know that I am someone who doesn't hate Isekai, but I'm not a huge fan of it either. Many Isekai fall flat for me because they're all pretty generic. So when Mushoku Tensei was announced, I wasn't that excited for the show. I thought, yeah, this will look great, but it's just going to be another Isekai. Boy, was I wrong. Like, dead wrong. Mushoku Tensei is by far one of the biggest highlights of this season, and that's because the show takes its time. And I don't mean the pacing of the show is slow or anything, I mean Mushoku Tensei took the time to build up its characters and the world at a pace that keeps you engaged within the show. It actually tells the story of a man who has been reincarnated into another world and shows how his old life impacts his decisions in his new life. Many people complain about how perverted our main character is, and for good reason. Like, this dude is the worst. If the perversion is too much for you, then I completely understand. As I said before, he is the worst. But to be honest, that's the point of the show. Rudy is a pervert. He still has the mind of a man who has locked himself up for most of his life, and that's just simply not going to go away. On top of that, he was reincarnated into a medieval world where if you know anything about that time period, women's rights weren't really a thing. The story addresses this by having Rudy observe the men around him and compare himself. As the season goes on, we see that Rudy learns the era of his perverted ways, and although we have a long way to go, he is changing into a better person. And the reason I'm breaking this down is because the show has this character development for almost all of its characters. Mushoku Tensei takes its time to establish the characters, their wants and desires, their relationships, their flaws, and even their abilities before it jumps into the fantasy action. Most of the first season is exploring the characters rather than fantasy action, and that type of buildup is something you rarely see in isekai anime. You can see why Mushoku Tensei is raved as the godfather of isekai because it actually does the standard formula some well-needed justice. Mushoku Tensei is shaping up to be one of my favorite isekai because of its character-focused storytelling and realistic approach to a creepy shut-in guy gets reincarnated into another world where he learns to be a better person along with magic and a whole bunch of other cool fantasy elements. That was a long label. I'm gonna have to work on that. The show is not for everyone, but I recommend you at least check it out. It's worth a watch. I know Jujutsu Kaisen was in my last seasonal breakdown, but the second half of the show really set it in stone for me. And the part that really made me fall in love with the show was not the awesome fights from the exchange event, it was not Toto being a really unique and funny character, and it wasn't even Megumi and Nobura finally getting their time to shine. No, it was the baseball episode. Yes, the episode where the characters just played baseball was my absolute favorite. Why? Because that's when you see the cast that has been built up since episode 1 come together, where it hits you that, hey, these are some awesome, well-developed, and unique, fun characters. Not only is the episode funny as all of hell, but it's also the episode where everything just calms down for a minute and you can reflect on the journey you've had so far. The moment where you see that the story is only getting started. So yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen really isn't changing the shonen demographic, but it's a great addition. The story touches on darker themes than your average shonen. The story hasn't bullshitted me so far. The animation and character designs are just incredible. And Gojo is Gojo. Enough said. I'm pretty sure most of you watching this video have seen JJK already, considering that it's been the talk of the town for some time now. But if you haven't at least checked it out, then what are you waiting for? I'm genuinely sad that Jujutsu Kaisen is going off the air until season 2 because the anime really was my Friday treat to myself. 
I felt like a kid again rushing home to see the new episode of Dragon Ball. This series is a fun watch and I can't wait for season 2. Watch out my hero. You have some competition for the best new shonen. Saving the best for last. I was waiting till the last episode dropped to write this section of the video, but then I found out we're not getting that till June 29th. So, yeah. But all other shows be damned, when I look back at Winter 2021, Wonder Egg Priority is going to be the first thing I remember. You think when dealing with subjects like suicide, abuse, self-harm, and sexuality, that the show wouldn't have the weird concept that it does. But this is anime, baby! I have said it before on this channel and I will keep saying it. Taking weird concepts and making them into impactful stories is anime's thing. Wonder Egg Priority encompasses this in a nutshell. If you have not seen this show, no matter what type of anime is your favorite, I highly recommend it. From the first episode alone, I knew this was going to be my favorite of the season, and boy, was I right. You like Slice of Life? This show's got it. You like cute girls doing cute things? Covered. You like drama? This show has it in spades. You like psychological anime that explores the human mind? Oh, hell yes, this is the place. You like action? Well, I'll let the show speak for itself. <laughs> Wonder Egg Priority was an absolute delight every single week, and I cannot wait for the final episode to drop. I think this might be my new favorite Magical Girl anime, if you can call it a Magical Girl anime. Either way, I will say that my one problem with the show is that it mentions a lot of B plot lines that are just not explored or glossed over throughout the season. So exploring those and spending more time with each issue would have been nice and screw that recap episode. But I guess you could say my main problem with the series is that it could have been longer. Yeah, I easily see this being a 24 episode anime. But at last, we got what we got. Wonder Egg Priority without a doubt ruled my winter 2021 season. And that's everything I watched in winter 2021. If I didn't include some of your favorites, let me know in the comments below and I'll go check them out. I hope I gave you guys some interesting titles to check out if you haven't already. But if you like this type of content, then hit that sub and bell button. Geely's uploaded a top 10 of all the anime I'll be reviewing in the next one of these videos. So if you're curious, then go check that out. Go follow our Twitter and join the On The Rise family. And for as low as $1 a month, you can support us on Patreon. So consider donating. Thanks for watching. And as always, Always, I'm RJ Lane, and this has been On The Rise.